Hello, fellas, and good weekend. Uh, the July 4th is coming right up, and uh, here in Canada we have July 1st. Anyway, uh, I was at the dollar store, and I bought these glasses. And these are great-looking glasses, aren't they? Dollar store uh, reading glasses. <laughs> Made in China. <laughs> <laughs> what are the, what are the, what, <laughs> this is typical, <laughs> typical, typical, but I can still use them, even though, even though this, 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 this side here is missing. Anyway, <clears throat> we're going to take a look at China right now, because China's got problems. You know how much money China is borrowed, if it's worse than the United States even. They have borrowed, borrowed tremendous amounts of money. They started to go into a recession uh, just after their stock market blew up a while ago. Uh, let me open the charts. Uh, we'll get the charts. Oh, oh, hold on here just a sec. Okay, let's open the charts right here. Uh, now, we're going to take a look at the Chinese uh, Shanghai uh, composite right now. And uh, let's see, we got it on the one day right here, but we're going to change the chart over. Let me pull down here so you can see better. Uh, we're going to set, set it on three years. Uh, three year, okay, here we go. Now, here's where China started to go into the recession that they had right here. This huge drops in the, in the Shanghai composite, the stock market in China. And it, I don't know. Some of you guys might remember this. They actually had to shut down the Shanghai composite, the, the Shanghai markets, during this bottom drop down to this bottom here, uh, when she dropped down to about uh, 20, right around 2730. Uh, she dropped down to 2737. They panicked and they shut everything down. And then what they did was is they came in with economic stimulus, which means basically borrowing a whole lot of money. And they weren't really able to make any sort of a recovery of the market. They almost bottom bounced along until, uh, let's see, until January 2018 of this year. And then when the U.S. market turned over, now notice that the Shanghai Composite was making a very, 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 very slow recovery along with uh, the rising United States stock market uh, until January. Now, when the crash occurred in the United States, not a crash, but a correction back early this year, that was this right here. Boom, right here on the Shanghai to composite. You notice it went down. Uh, it was up around uh, 30, let me see, what was it up to? It was up to 35.58, and then boom, she dropped all the way down to 30, about 31.29. And what's been happening is she's been losing. As she's been rolling over. And what we notice is just recently, it's low here. The lowest low when they actually panicked and the whole world was panicking over the Chinese stock market. Right now it's lower and dropping. It's actually, well, or just as low. It was 27.37. And they were panicking. Look, now it's 2847, which is which is in the same ballpark uh, right now. And nobody's much as saying anything about it. Uh, nobody's doing too much in the news about it. But I'm carrying the story uh, right here. Uh, Chinese stocks reverse gains and then lower. Real estate and airline shares slump. So what we're going into is the Chinese don't even have any room left to borrow a whole lot more money to, to up this market, to bring this market back up. Uh, the Fed is tightening in a tightening policy, and all the world's central banks are in tightening policies. And what we have here is not just the Chinese stock market. I'm keeping my eye on that, but what I'm really keeping my eye on here is this Chinese real estate market. Chinese stocks reverse gains to end lower, and real estate ends lower. That That's because I think that the bottom is finally starting to drop out. Just starting to drop out of the Chinese real estate market. Shanghai, June 25th, Reuters. Chinese stocks gave up early gains to close lower on Monday as expected reserve requirement ratios. Uh, the cut was largely offset by lingering trade war fears and a weakening yuan pushed lower real estate and airline shares. Uh, Here's the thing, you got to keep it, I got to keep a very close eye on the real estate market in China. 
I am honest to God. I'm expecting some sort of a, a because it's not a real real estate market. This is why I'm expecting such a crash in it. It's where people have actually invested all of their money, and it's not really that they're actually using these condos and these apartments and homes that they've bought. They're not using them. They're empty. It's an investment. And because they're all empty, there's not really a real world use for the investment. And I don't know if, if you guys are, 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 see what I see here. I want you to see what I see. What I see is miles after miles of empty uh, apartments that the people have invested in and they've invested the money that they've got from selling products to the United States and now there's a trade war going on. I mean, this should be a no-brainer that now that there's a trade war going on and they're going to be putting import tariffs on these goods that they use the money in the good years to buy this real estate with. This real estate is the biggest real estate bubble on earth, the Chinese real estate bubble. And if it bursts, the Ch it makes up an astronomical amount of the Chinese economy. Uh, Percentage-wise, uh, it's astronomical. I, I, I think it's like 60% or something of the entire Chinese economy. And so this Chinese economy, you know, uh, they've been fudging these numbers and saying they're having like 6.5% growth or whatever, which is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, the Chinese economy at this point is probably actually going into contraction rather than growth. They're probably already starting in the first initial stages of going into a recession in China. And that's the R word. They haven't heard that R word. Uh, this is, it's just the whole world's economy is on edge. Uh, let's take a look at what this guy has to say right here. Uh, opinion. This is an opinion piece. Uh, only, but uh, but it says a lot. It says China's economic time bomb. There are three troubling signs that China is a prime candidate to be the next site of the financial crisis. Uh, and uh, the article says conventional wisdom holds that China is on the ascent, and the United States is in decline. That China's economy is roaring with raw energy, and that Beijing. Uh, Belt and Road mega project of infrastructure building in the central, south, and, and southeast Asia is laying the basis for a global economic hegemony. Uh, some questions whether Beijing's ambitions are sustainable. Uh, inequality in China is approaching that in the United States, which per, uh, portends rising domestic discontent. While China's grave e environmental problems may pose inexorable limits to its economic expansion. Uh, China's real estate bubble. See, the first thing he goes into is China's real estate bubble. He says there's no doubt that China is already in, in the midst of a real estate bubble, as the United States during the subprime mortgage bubble that culminated in the global financial crisis of 2007 to 2009. The real estate market has attracted too many wealthy and middle-class speculators, leading to a frenzy that has seen real estate prices climb sharply. And this is exactly what's going on in China. It's just what he described. A frenzy of speculation. What always happens at the end of a frenzy of speculation? What happened when Bitcoin was at $20,000 because of a, a, a frenzy of, of speculation? Well, bubbles always pop, right? So it says the Chinese real estate prices soared. In the so-called tier one cities like Beijing and Shanghai from 2015 to 2017, pushing worried authorities there to take measures to pop the bubble. But they didn't pop the bubble. The bubble hasn't been popped. The bubble's ready to be popped. It says major cities, including Beijing, imposed various measures. They increased down payment requirements, tightened mortgage restrictions, banned the resale of property for several years, and limited the number of homes that people can buy. These are drastic, draconian measures to try to slow this thing down. It was so hot. And this is all investor money of people in China trying to get their money invested. And they were just a frenzy to buy, even if the apartment wasn't finished. There's no toilet in it. There's pipes sticking out of the wall. You know, uh, there's the, the place is a shabby looking mess, and they're paying like a half a million U.S. dollars for it. 
and it's only a tiny two-bedroom apartment. I mean, this is the sort of thing that's going on. And and uh, in China, it's the same sort of thing that's been going on in, in Toronto, Canada, and Vancouver, Canada, and so on. Uh, some of these real estate bubbles, it's the same thing that's been going on in places in the United States as well, certain areas. Now, real estate in the United States, certain areas of the United States are in a huge bubble, and other areas are not. And so it, uh, all things are not equal in the United States. There's still places that you can go in the United States and get uh, homes that are extremely cheap. Buy a home for, for $15,000 sort of a thing if you find the right spot, you know. Uh, of course, it's going to be a little bit of uh, of uh, a trailer park uh, uh, area sort of. <laughs> if you only pay 15000 it's going to be down a dirt road probably, and your neighbors are probably going to be shooting guns all night. But, I mean, still, you can still get a piece for that cheap. Uh, whereas, if you go out to the West Coast, uh, maybe around San Francisco or something, uh, you can't get nothing cheap. Uh, you can't buy a cardboard box there cheap. Uh, anyway, so it's, it's a great difference in, in the uh, United States. But here in China, they've had a huge real estate bubble. And the same thing here in Canada. And these things are getting ready to pop. Uh, they're really getting ready to pop. And what's going to pop them is a coordinated effort by all the central banks on earth right now at this moment is getting ready. It's going to draw liquidity out of the system. It's going to pop all these bubbles at once. And then the Fed's going to pee themselves. When they see what they've created, what they've done with their quantitative tightening, they're, they're going to try to reverse everything because they're going to start to pee themselves because the whole system's going to start to fall and collapse. And at that point, there's going to be no going back unless they use drastic me measures, uh, unheard of measures to turn it around. They're going to have to turn it around because if they don't, then they are going to be held responsible for the chaos that ensues. And quite literally, the people will turn and they won't be just talk about in the fed or stuff like that that's all uh all this talk that goes on it won't be talk anymore it'll it'll change the people's opinion over the whole of the united states will suddenly and drastically do a 180 degree turn and they better do something about it when this happens when this crash comes and believe me it's coming um uh, they talk about the shadow banking system here. It says shadow banks comes out of the shadows. And honest to gosh, the Chinese have one of the biggest shadow banking systems on earth. Uh, how these shadow banking systems work is a bank like Deutsche Bank will go in there. And what they'll do is they'll open up a subsidiary banks that are like loosely connected. They're not really part of the actual main banking structure but they're a, like a they're like a subsidiary bank of such and such a bank but when they go in they buy a big building up and they put in secretaries and they put in a big front on the front that says the name of the the fake bank not it's not really a fake bank it's a real bank but they make it all look so official and above board and everything and really what they're really after is to get this this money from the chinese people that's called, uh, well, what's the name of it? Uh, that's called a financial, uh, uh, it's a financial investment. It's a financial product. It's a, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of it. Uh, they use a name for these products. They're called, uh, uh, they actually wrap them up in bundles uh, of, a, of a product. It's a product, a financial product that they sell them. And they'll give them a better rate of interest than a regular bank would give them. Uh, and so what they do then is, is they make it all look official. They'll have like a road project they're building. And they'll have the name of their their, their co fake comp not really fake companies, they're real companies. But they're building roads to nowhere, basically. And building bridges to nowhere. And building shopping malls. Uh, and inside the shopping mall, they'll have all the latest, greatest stores. Like they'll have a Burger King and they'll have a McDonald's and everything else inside the shopping mall. But it's all... Uh, a painted billboard in front, like like the like at the Carney show, you know, with just a says McDonald's and a big sign says McDonald's, and you go on the inside of it, and there's no restaurant there, and there's no customers. It's all just an empty facade. It's almost like a Hollywood movie set, 
Uh, and what they do is they get this financial investment. Uh, financial investment products, I think is the name of it, or something like that. And they get this tremendous amount of money. Well, these Chinese people are looking for yield. That's why they bought all these apartments and stuff. They got all this money from selling shoddy products to the stuff like this, it's like these glasses of mine right here at the dollar store. We've bought all this crap from them. And over the years, we bought a lot of it. But a lot of it, we got our houses full of it. Let's face it, most of you people out there, a lot of you people, including myself, that are listening to this product, pr program, we've got a lot of this Chinese garbage in our house. We've got vases, we've got flowers, uh, we've got everything that they've sold us at the dollar store because we're cheap. We're cheap, but the stuff they're making us is even cheaper. <laughs> and anyway, so they've taken all that money that they've made from us, and they've went out and they've had the huge investments, the Chinese people, but they've invested that money and it's went back into this shadow banking sector that's the West over here cheating them again. So so it's like, who's cheating who? The Chinese are giving us the, the fake junky products, and they're thinking, hey, you know, we're ahead. Look at them silly Americans buying our shoddy merchandise. And us over here, we're giving them money that's so fresh off the printing press that they're getting green ink on their fingers when they, when they take the money from us. You know, so who's cheating who? It's like <laughs> they think they're cheating us, and we think we're cheating them. <laughs> I mean, it's been a weird relationship over the years, but this relationship's going to come to a sudden halt. We got a trade war going on, and and uh, China might be first to go down before the United States even goes down. But I think everybody's going to go down because the world's all interconnected now, and trade is all interconnected. Uh, we're in a really bad situation. I wanted to report this morning on China. Uh, thank you guys for listening, and uh, we'll catch you in the next show. Bye bye.